Hello everyone and welcome back to SharePoint Pittsburgh. Today we're going to be starting our first video in a series of advanced document management tutorial videos. Specifically, we're going to be discussing site columns. In understanding how site columns work, we'll be discussing what a site column and a site column gallery are, then we'll discuss their practical uses. We'll close out our tutorial by discussing scope. I'm a big fan of learning by example, so let's get started. Let's open SharePoint. In today's lesson, we'll be creating two new lists to demonstrate how custom column definitions work. We'll be creating a short customer birthday list for both of our offices, and among their standard contact information, we'll be assigning each customer a Happy Scoops membership type. They will not be Active Directory users to save us some time, but simply text fields with their customer names in them. If you are not familiar with Active Directory, please see our previous videos on SharePoint user security. So let's go ahead and create our lists. We'll go into Cranberry, go to List, and then go to Create. And we'll go to List, Custom List, and we'll call this Membership Rewards. Go ahead and click Create. Now if you recall from our previous tutorials, these custom lists come propagated with just a title. So we're going to want to go ahead and add some fields. But first, let's go ahead and change title to name. So we'll go to List Settings. We'll go to Title. Then we'll go ahead and change this to name. We'll just leave all the fields the same and then press OK. Now you'll see that the column name is now changed. Let's go ahead and create a column. We'll call this one birthday. We're not going to enforce that uh, customers give us our birthday. We'll just press OK. So now we have two fields. We have name and birthday and then the auto-generated fields created by and modified. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and create our custom column definition. So let's go up here. We'll go to Site Actions, Site Settings, go to site columns and now you'll see all of the uh, column definitions uh, in this list here. You can scroll down and take a look. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a new one. And we're going to call this membership type. We'll go ahead and make it a choice menu. We'll leave the group the same so it'll show up in custom columns. We'll create the description simply membership uh, rewards type. We'll require that the uh, column contains information. And let's just give them a few different membership types. Silver, gold, and platinum. We want a drop down menu and we'll keep the default to silver. We'll press OK. We'll head back to our store list. We'll go back to our list. Now we'll go to list settings, add from existing site columns, custom columns. And then we'll do membership type. Hit OK. Go back to membership rewards. And now you'll see it's a, a, an option here. So we'll add a few items. Allison Apple 1 1 2000. And you'll notice we now have membership type, so hit save. 
add another item. Okay, now that we have all these members created, let's go ahead and do the same thing for other store. So we'll go up, we'll go to Mars, we'll go to Lists, and create another list. And we'll just do the same exact thing, create a custom list. And once again, we'll change the title to Name. We can do that by going to list settings, clicking on title, name, employee name, oh, I'm sorry, it's a customer name. Then we'll create our columns right from here. Birth date, date and time. And this time we're just going to be able to add from existing site columns. Click on custom columns, add the membership type, press OK. Let's go back over here and add some new items. We'll add Rochelle Raisin. Sandy Sweet. And Teresa Tart. So for review, we went to the root site and went to user permissions and then we went to site columns. When we were there in the site columns gallery, we created a custom column with certain fields. So you may be wondering, how is this different from the fields that we've already been creating, Leo? Well, the difference is, is that that definition is stored in one place, so if we make a change, it will change it in multiple places. I think the best way to understand this is, is to actually see this happen. So what we'll do, we'll go back to our home, we'll go to Site Actions, Site Settings, Site Columns, we'll go down to our Custom Column, Click on membership type. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change, we'll change silver to diamond. Press OK here. Now let's see what happened to our stores list. We'll go to Mars, membership rewards. So now what we'll do is we'll create an add new item. So you'll see that we made one change and it updated that in multiple locations. That's the benefit of creating a custom site column. Imagine if you had a column that was used in many different sites and subsites, and you wanted to make a change to that column. It would be extremely tedious, and, you'd, and if it was me, I'd probably miss one or two. So having it in one location helps out tremendously for management purposes. So while we're at it, let's try a few more things. We'll go back up to Home, Site Actions, Site Settings, once again go to site column gallery custom columns membership type and this time we'll change it to a radio button press OK and let's see what happened to our stores once again so now you'll see this has been changed to a radio button and if we go to our other store, it will change also. So the last thing on the agenda is to talk about scope. We're able to create these columns in places other than home. 
You'll typically be creating these custom columns at the root site so that all the subsites will have access to the custom column. You are able, however, to create a column in a subsite and that'll act as the root and anything above that, uh, that site will not have the custom column definition. Many of you might be thinking that sounds just like inheritance from our last video and that's exactly what it is. With that being said, that concludes our video tutorial today. Uh, please join us next time as we'll be discussing document management further in depth and we'll be going over content types.